I know you're not going to believe this, but it has been a full two and a half years since my last FreeNAS tutorial. Let's fix that. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and this is my TrueNAS Core 12.0 tutorial series. This series will focus on the installation and configuration of TrueNAS, starting with this video right here. I'm going to walk you through the installation steps to get TrueNAS Core up and running, as well as your first disk pool and your first share. To get started, you're going to need to download the TrueNAS Core ISO from the TrueNAS website, and then flash it over to a USB drive to install it on your system. In my case, I'm going to be using a program called Belana Etcher for Windows, which is a USB flash utility. For this video, I am going to walk through imaging my USB drive inside of Windows. However, if you have a different operating system, your instructions are likely going to be different. Make sure to reference the FreeNAS or TrueNAS installation guide for preparing your media if you need those instructions. Inside of Balana Etcher, we're going to click Flash from File, and then select the TrueNAS 12.0 ISO image I just downloaded. Then we're going to go to Select Target, and select my Patriot USB drive I just put into the computer. Click on Select, and then click Flash. This process does take a couple of minutes, so great opportunity to go grab a drink. Once Balana Etcher has finished up, you can take the USB drive out of your computer, and go put it into your server, and we'll get the installation started. Now luckily, my server has an IPMI, or a remote management interface, meaning that I can see the monitor from my desk here without sitting right next to all those fans spinning at about 14,000 RPM, meaning the video gets to be a lot quieter. So once you plug the USB into your server, it is time to power on your system. Now you're going to want to boot up to that USB key, and in my case, F10 is the button you spam to select a boot disk. If you've successfully booted up to that USB drive, you should be greeted by this screen right here, which is the TrueNAS installer selection screen. We're going to select option 1 to install, which is the basic installer. However, if you have a server that needs a serial console activated, you can select option 2. Once you reach the main menu, we're going to select option 1 to install TrueNAS Core. Next up is the drive selection for where TrueNAS is going to be installed. Now, TrueNAS can be run from something as simple as an 8GB USB key. However, I do recommend installing TrueNAS on at least an SSD, if not a pair of SSDs, to give yourself a little bit more redundancy. In my case, I'm going to be installing on a pair of 120GB Kingston SSDs. If you select more than one disk in this menu, it will automatically create a ZFS mirror, or the equivalent in ZFS to a RAID 1. The next menu confirms with you which drives are going to be wiped and have TrueNAS installed on them, so click Yes to continue. Next up, we need to create a root password, which will be the password we use to log into TrueNAS with the first time. Once the password has been set, TrueNAS will verify which boot method you'd like to use on your server, either UEFI or Legacy BIOS. In my particular server, my boot disk is only compatible with Legacy BIOS, so that's what I'm going to use. Up next, it'll ask if you want to create a swap partition on your boot drive, which can help your NAS run a little bit faster. However, in my case, I will be using a cache disk separate from my boot disk, so I'm going to select No. If you don't plan on installing an SSD cache, then I would select Create Swap. And now we just wait for it to install. Once it's done installing, you should see the TrueNAS success screen, and it will ask you to reboot your server. And we're going to do that now. If you've booted up your system correctly, you should be greeted by this screen right here, which is the TrueNAS home screen. Now, there's not a lot you can control from this particular screen. Pretty much, it's just for setting your IP address and resetting your root password if you forget what it is. So we're going to jump over into a web browser, fire up the web GUI, and get this thing configured. Do take note of what your IP address is right here. You will be connecting to TrueNAS with that the first time around. Just type in the IP address of your server right here on top, and you should be greeted by the TrueNAS login screen. The username we're going to use is root, and the password is whatever password you set up during the install process. Once you log in, you'll be greeted by the TrueNAS dashboard, which shows you all of your system information and current system health. First up, we need to take care of a couple housekeeping items, like configuring a static IP address for your network interface. So we're going to go over to the Network tab and then click on Interfaces. As you can see, my server has two network interfaces on board, and one of them is connected. So we're going to go over to the arrow right next to the IP address, and then go down to the Edit button. By default, your network card will be set up to grab a DHCP lease. However, I'm going to set up using a static address. So I'm going to uncheck the DHCP box, go down to IP address, and type in my desired IP address. You also need to configure your net mask over here on the side, and in my case, it is a slash 24. Once you're done, go ahead and click Apply. Now you get 60 seconds to test your changes, and it will automatically revert if you don't want to keep them, which I do like as a feature, just in case you typed something in wrong. But we're going to go ahead and hit Test Changes, go to Confirm, and hit Test Changes. 
I'm gonna open up a new tab with that new IP address and we connected. And now we can go over to save changes and it makes the IP address change permanent. Now that we have our host name and IP address configured, it's time to get some storage onto this box. So to configure that, we're gonna go down to the storage tab and click on pools. And over on the right hand side, go ahead and click on add. Go ahead and click on create pool. Now in my server, I have a mix of eight terabyte and three terabyte hard drives. And a really cool feature of TrueNAS Core is this suggest layout button. If I go ahead and click on that, it will automatically grab a matching subset of hard drives. So if I scroll on down, you can see it's grabbed all eight of my eight terabyte disks, automatically assigned it to a RAID Z2 and has an estimated raw capacity of 44 terabytes. Before we continue, I do need to do a couple of more things. So first off, I'm gonna scroll up to the top and name the storage pool. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I am going to be utilizing a cache disk in my setup. So I'm gonna click on the add VDEV button and then click on cache. In my server, I have a 256 gigabyte NVMe drive that I will be using as a cache disk. So if I scroll to the bottom of available disks right here, I can see a 256 gigabyte NVMe disk. I'm gonna go ahead and click the checkbox by that. Scrolling down a little bit further, you can see the data VDEV right here, which is my eight terabyte pool. That's not what we're concerned with. We're gonna scroll down a little bit further to the cache VDEV I just created. And if I click the arrow right next to that, it will add my NVMe drive to our cache VDEV. And if everything on this page looks correct, you can go ahead and click on create. And it'll ask you to confirm and then create pool. So that's the file system sorted out. However, we still haven't created an actual network share. So to do that, we're gonna go down to the sharing tab and I'm gonna click on the Windows share or the SMB share. Now this process is pretty much the same regardless of what service you're going to be setting up, whether it's an AFP, iSCSI, or an NFS share. Once you're inside Samba sharing, I'm gonna go ahead and click add. To create a new file share, first you have to tell TrueNAS what directory you'd like to use. And in our case, we did just create a new storage pool, so it should show up in the pull down menu right here. In our case, it is the Craft 44 terabyte Z2. If I click on that, it will auto populate that path. I'm gonna give my share a simpler name. We're just gonna call it storage. Now for most use cases, the default share parameters will work just fine. However, if you are going to be setting up this one directory with multiple share services, that is setting up AFP or NFS, you will wanna select the appropriate share protocols down below. In my case, this share is only going to be accessed by Windows PC, so I'm gonna leave that at the default. And again, if everything looks right, go ahead and click on submit. And if you're starting up a service for the first time, it will ask you if you'd like to enable that service. In this case, this is the first time we're bringing up Samba share, so I'm gonna click enable service. So now we have a file share, but we still need a user to access it with. So to create a new user, I'm gonna go up to the accounts tab and then click on users. To create a new user, go ahead and click on add, and then we're gonna give this user a name and a username. Next in, we'll type in a password. And again, a feature I really like of TrueNAS Core is it will actually auto-generate passwords for you. So if you're generating a lot of different user accounts, you can generate unique passwords at the same time. Now, when you set up a new network share inside of TrueNAS, two things happen by default. Number one, root is the owner of the share and has full read-write access. Number two, the ownership group is the wheel group and by default only has read and execute access. Notice the distinct lack of write access. When you create a new user account, TrueNAS will automatically create a group for that user as well with the same exact name. So we have the username of craft and the group name of craft. However, that really won't jive with the permissions that I wanna set for our file share. So I'm gonna select the primary group as wheel, which by default has read access to all shares. For Windows users, there's one more thing that I like to do, and that's clicking on the Microsoft account box. This enables additional authentication methods, making it easier for Windows 8 and higher PCs to log into a TrueNAS share. And if everything on the page looks good, go ahead and click on submit. Once your user has been created, you are almost done. However, we still need to go and fix the permissions for our new network share. And unfortunately, the only way to do this is through the shell. So we're gonna go to the left-hand side and scroll all the way down to shell. Now be very careful inside of here, as notice I am logged in as root, which means any command that I type in here will execute with no second chances. Any storage pools you've created will show up in the mount directory. It kind of makes sense, right? So we're gonna get there by typing in cd space forward slash mnt. Type in ls to see the directory contents and your storage pools will show up right here. Now there we can see the craft 44 terabyte pool I created earlier. And to view the permissions on this, we're gonna type in ls space dash al. 
I've gone ahead and highlighted the permissions on the screen right here, so we can see this is a directory, and root has read, write, and execute access. However, the wheel group only has read and execute access, as does everyone have read and execute access, which I'm not too fond of either. To fix this, we're going to type in chmod space 770 space, and then the name of your storage pool. Now if we type in ls-al, we can see our root user still has read, write, and execute permission, which is perfect, and we can see our wheel group now has read, write, and execute permission as well. Also of note is the any other user, which is any user that doesn't fit into either the root user or the wheel group, has no permissions to the share at all now. And if you've done everything correctly, it is finally time to join your new network share. So we're going to go over to my PC and click on Map Network Drive. To connect, I'm going to type backslash backslash, followed by the name of my TrueNAS server, which is craft-truenas-12, with another backslash, followed by the share name, which is storage. Now, if your Windows username and password matches the new username and password you set up inside of TrueNAS, you can go ahead and click Finish right here, and Windows will send your authentication over to TrueNAS and automatically connect you, which is why we checked that little Microsoft authentication box. However, in my case, I am using a different username and password, so I'm going to click on Connect using different credentials. Click on Finish, and it will bring up a dialog prompt for you to enter your TrueNAS username and password. In my case, that is Craft, and the password is, well, a password. And that should just about do it. Welcome to your brand new TrueNAS share. Now do make sure you have read and write access to your new share. Easiest way to do that is just to create a new folder. And if that's successful, you are ready to rock and roll. And that should just about wrap up this tutorial. If you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to answer them. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. And if you like what you see on this channel and would like to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description below. You'll get exclusive access to my Discord server where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this one and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. And of course we need to start this thing out the right way. So I have Ex Novo's Pearl Haggard. It is a German style Pilsner clocking in at 5.1%. I don't know what makes this a German style Pilsner because it tastes just like a Pilsner. It's crisp, it's clean, it's refreshing. It's a great lawnmower beer. End of review. <laughs> you know, for a Pilsner, this isn't half bad. Um, I've certainly had better Pilsners, uh, and the warmer it's getting, the less I'm enjoying it. Uh, so very much like a Pilsner. Um, there's not a lot of depth to the flavor. It doesn't make you think very hard. Um, again, I'm not quite sure why they said German style Pilsner, unless they're using German purity laws to brew this one, which in that case, yeah, I guess it is, you know, German style, but a Pilsner is a very basic beer anyway, and 5.1% is not exceeding the expectations of a Pilsner as far as ABV or anything else. So it's decent. It's exactly what you'd want out of a Pilsner, but it's really nothing more than that. Just for reference, I know I'm going to say Freenas at least once in this tutorial. I apologize. I mean Trunas. I really do. I've been trying to force myself to say Trunas for like two or three weeks now, and I keep saying Freenas. It's going to slip in even after the edit. I'm not going to catch it. So, you've been warned. One minute, 37 seconds later. Now there's not a lot you can do from the screen outside of setting your network addresses and resetting your root password if you happen to forget it. So we're gonna jump into the web GUI and configure FreeNAS. There it is. <laughs> God, it's even written on my shirt.